lift up your hearts, we lift them unto the Lord. It's another Wednesday, glorious morning. I pray for you that this morning and the remaining part of the day, the remaining part of the week, you have glorious encounter with the Lord. And as you have this glorious encounter, you will not remain the same. But the fire of the Holy Spirit will continue to propel you to do it right. Let us pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Son. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for this beautiful morning. Thank you, Lord, for your mercies, for your goodness over us. Be thou exalted, be thou glorified. And so, as we want to hear your word, as we want to pray, come among us in the resurrection power. Lead us and see us through this period of hearing your word and praying unto you. In Jesus' precious and mighty name we have prayed. Amen. I want to share with you one important Bible passage. And this Bible passage is so popular. One of the best Bible passages and one of the most popular Bible passage. Everybody is reciting it off head and at the same time, I know that this Bible passage has helped many men of God to preach the gospel. It's no any other passage than John chapter 3, verse 16, which says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This everlasting life that we are talking about is from God through his son Jesus Christ. You and I are just like a strayed sheep. You and I, we are like a sheep that, that has no guardian. And Christ Jesus made us in this position, the position of sinfulness. And when God created heaven and earth, he created man and woman. But the first man, the first woman disobeyed God. They fell from the grace. May you not fall from the grace in the name of Jesus Christ. And this time around, God has deemed it fit to send his only begotten son so that you and I will not perish. We are still rejoicing because Christ died on the cross to save people like us. And if Christ has not come, our faith is, if Christ has not risen, our faith is in vain. And if Christ has not come, I don't know what you and I will be worshipping. But for the Father, God so loved us. We have strayed away from his path. Everybody is doing whatever pleases him. But God met us in his son. And he said, come back home. And if, if God has said we should come back home, we should be ready to know him more. We should be ready to worship him. We should be ready to listen to his injunctions. We should be ready to preach the gospel and bring more people into the kingdom. There was a man called Nicodemus who went to meet Jesus in the night. And when he got to Jesus, he said, Rabbi, I know that you are from the Lord. And all what you have been saying, we we can understand. But Jesus told him in verse 3, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. If God has sent his only begotten son to us, we need to be born again. We need a regenerating spirit. We need to leave our sinfulness and follow him without counting the cost. And verse 5, Jesus told Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a big man in the temple, one of the Pharisees, one of those that read the Bible, one of those that conduct services in the temple. And verse 5 says, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is for you and I. 
Except we have been born of water, which is baptism. Except we have been born of the Spirit. Except we confess our sins. Sin is an anomaly. Sin is not associated with God at all. Sin is associated with man. But Christ died on the cross and he used his blood to make us to be righteous unto him. So brothers and sisters, the world is full of all sorts. Different types of things are happening. The kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus has died, he rose, he ascended, and he's coming back. Are you prepared for this coming Lord? This Lord Jesus will surely come back. And verse 17 of that, um, John chapter 16 says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn. Whatever you are now, God is not condemning you. But what God is telling you is for you to repent and come back to him. God has not sent his son to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So that you and I might be saved, so that we won't enter into the lake of fire. So that we won't be misguided. So that we won't do whatever pleases us. Sin kills. Sin destroys. And whatever the sin that we have engaged in, it is high time for us to repent because the coming of the Lord is so imminent. And I pray for you that as you have heard this word, the word will have a place in your life and will bring you to eternal life. Let us pray. Father Lord, we say thank you for this morning. Thank you Lord for your goodness and for mercies. Thank you Lord for the peace of mind. Thank you Lord for the joy of salvation. Thank you Lord for renewing our strength in this morning. Thank you, Lord, for giving us fresh breath. Thank you, Lord, for giving us new hope. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to strengthen our faith. Thank you, Lord, for the salvation that you have made available through your Son. Thank you, Lord, because you have called us by your mercy to be, to be part of this salvation story. Accept our thanks and praises in the name of Jesus Christ. We know that we are sinners. Our righteousness is like a filthy rag. We know that every day of our lives, there's nothing good. But through the blessedness of your son, through the righteousness of your son, we have been made righteous. And so we pray, Lord, that you remember mercy and do not visit us with judgment. Remember mercy in this nation and do not visit us with judgment. Remember mercy in our homes. Remember mercy in our lives. And do not visit us with judgment. And so, Heavenly Father, as we have gathered this morning, we are now praying that the spirit of regeneration, the spirit of being born again, please, Lord, put it in us. The spirit that will make us to weep and loathe for our sins and turn from our bad ways, Lord Jesus, let it fall fresh upon us. Wash us clean and remove our sins. Let not our sins make you to, to, have, to, I mean, to put your wrath upon us in the name of Jesus Christ. We cover ourselves in the blood of Jesus. We cover ourselves in the blood of Jesus. And we wash ourselves clean in the pool of blood of your son, Jesus Christ. And so, Heavenly Father, we now pray for our world let there be peace. Let there be peace. This war is escalating. Heavenly Father, we pray, Lord God Almighty, that you will help us out. We pray that you will help us out and you give us the grace to beat our plow, our, our, our war implements, to plow shares, in, to plow the ground in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for our leaders. Instead of war, instead of crisis, Lord God Almighty, we put it in their lives to embrace peace. In the name of Jesus, let there be peace in Nigeria. Let there be peace in Sudan. Let there be peace in Gaza. Let there be peace in Jerusalem. Let there be peace in, in Ukraine. Let there be peace in Russia and other places that are not peaceful. Lord, let there be peace. Let our leaders repent of their sins and let them come to know you. Let them come into your knowledge. And so we pray, Lord God Almighty, that you do not rebuke us 
in your wrath. We pray, Lord God Almighty, that your salvation will be upon us. And our wicked ways will surely turn from you so that we won't be your foes, but we'll be your, we'll be your friends. And so, Heavenly Father, create in us a new heart, a new a contract heart in the name of Jesus Christ. Those that are sick, I pray for you. If it is sin that is holding you down, your sins are forgiven. Those powers that are holding you down, we break them. And we say, be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you there today? Maybe your business is not moving. When you, when you had the money, you use it for whatever pleases you. And so the business is down now. I pray for you. Whatever is holding your business down, is it the economy? Is it any trouble? In the name of Jesus Christ, receive fruitfulness. Receive fruitfulness. And I pray for you that you will be like the tree planted by the waterside so that you bear much fruit. Your body, your soul, your spirit will prosper and at the same time you will be evergreen in the name of Jesus. We pray for those that we pray for those that are still looking for job. Please provide good job for them. Our world is in your hand. Please, Lord, save us. Strengthen our leaders. Let them do it right. Remove our, our, remove our woes. Remove all problems of life. And may we continue to love you more and more. Thank you, Lord. Because whoever the Son of God set free is free indeed. And so we are free. Free from sickness. Free from troubles. Free from satanic attack. Free from every part that wants to destroy us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you for listening. See you next week, the same time, by His grace. God bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.